Here I am in Sapien. We have the tactical battle rifle and we uh, changed it to shoot one bullet at a time. So I think what I want to do is that I want to uh, further kind of adjust the ammo to kind of reflect the one shot. So this is a pretty massive magazine. We have 36 shots, 36 rounds per mag, and the it also has a maximum capacity of 108 rounds. But since we're doing one round, I think I'm going to just divide everything by three. So I'm going to go to Gorilla. And by the way, uh, as per the chunkier bean pointed out, in one of his videos, it's a good practice to keep your stuff in a separate folder in the tags directory. So I just made a giraffix folder and then I created objects, weapons, rifle, battle rifle, tag. When I moved all of this stuff, I did have to edit the tags a bit to fix the paths to stuff. Um, so I'll kind of show you what I mean is that when I moved everything to this folder, for example, these fields become red because that location, that path to what it was earlier no longer exists. So you have to edit, you, you have to, you have to um, edit these paths again to point to where it's supposed to, but I fixed all of that up. But let's go ahead and let's change the ammo capacity and stuff. So um, here I am in the magazines area in the dot weapon tag. I'm going to get my calculator out. So I want to divide everything by three. So total rounds initial 108 divided by three, 36. So it'll have the maximum amount of rounds that you can actually pick up is going to be 36 and then the rounds total maximum so like if you start out a mission sometimes like let's say in halo one uh truth and reconciliation you start out with a stupid amount of sniper rifle ammo but you can never really pick up that amount once you've depleted it. This is kind of what rounds total maximum is about. Um, so 144 divided by 3. I'm not good at doing math in my head. The only time I'm good at it is when I'm playing cribbage. Uh, 36 I do know is going to be 12. And rounds reloaded is going to be 12. Uh, admittedly, I'm not 100% certain how this area works so this is obviously like picking up ammo and it being added to the uh to to your weapon um i'm just going to change this number anyway uh so 72 divided by three it's going to be 24. So let's save this now, and when we go back into Sapien, uh, this should be reflected. And as you can see it is, we, we no longer have 36 rounds per mag. As you can see on the weapon itself, and on the top right on the HUD. So we can shoot. Uh, something that's kind of weird though, is that the ammo counter on top on the HUD didn't really reflect that change. It still has 36 rounds. But when I reload, it only goes up to 12. But there's still 36 rounds total on the HUD. And that's not really what we want. That's not ideal, so how do we actually get the ammo meter on the HUD to reflect this change? Well, 
it, it, we have to go down a little bit of a rabbit hole. Now, it's not too complicated, uh, but uh, we do need to go back to Gorilla. And right here in the first person section of the weapon tag, you'll see the C-HUD interface, and that's pointing to battlerifle.chud. Let's click this open button next to it, and that will open up that tag. And let's go... Uh, so this, this widget collection here, um, we want to change this to ammo area, since that is what tells us how much ammo we have on the HUD. Now let's go down. Now right here you'll see meter and schematic and divider. We want to keep this on meter. I will cover the schematic in the next video and I'll tell you why at the end. Uh, but let's keep going down until we see um, right here, you're going to have right here render data, and meter's going to be selected. Now one thing I want to point out here is that the shader type is set to meter. You don't want to change this. This is very, very important for what we're going to be doing. But I want to point out that this meter shader type is here. Now you scroll down a little bit further until you get to about this scalar outputs and right here in bitmap you'll see we have uh, this path to a ballistic meters.bitmap so let's open that and let's take a look at it and let's show bitmaps now at first this is kind of confusing <laughs> uh, let's we we see a bit of blue and stuff let's go to let's alpha channel let's set that to show alpha now this is making quite a bit more sense you can see that this is the uh the ammo counter on the hud and this is here for every single weapon in the game that actually that that has this style of counter so not like the plasma pistol or plasma rifle where it has that kind of battery meter uh this this is for weapons that have standard ammunition uh for example this is the needler right here this one this is the carbine this right here is the mauler uh, I believe this is the spiker, fuel rod gun, etc. Now let's go back to show alpha. Let's change that back to don't show alpha. And again, everything kind of goes back to this weird blue stuff. The, this, the blue is going to be very important to how this works. And if you're familiar with RGB channels and all and how that works and stuff. You're probably already figuring out how this works. I'm going to close out of this preview. Uh, I'm gonna. You know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close out of Sapien for now because I'm not going to be worrying about it for a while. Uh, now let's. Let's find this ballistic meters bitmap in Reclaimer and let's open it in an image editor. So I'm going to go to uh, Reclaimer and let's. I'm. So Master Chief Collection and the Halo 3 mod tools. Just got an update today, so I'm halfway expecting uh, Reclaimer to not work. <laughs> I'm crossing my fingers that it will. I'm gonna close out of Steam here. Alright, we wanna open um, 
you want to go to your Master Chief Collection install, go to Halo 3, Maps, pick pretty much any map. I'll just do um, Armory. And what do you know? It actually did work. Um, so that's good. That's good that Reclaimer doesn't really need an update. So, uh, now the bitmaps, of course, you're going to find in this bitmaps folder right here. And we want to look for, if we go back to Gorilla here, we want to look for UI C HUD bitmaps ballistic meters dot bitmap. So we'll want to scroll down all the way in this bitmaps folder on Reclaimer. We want to scroll down until we see UI. C HUD bitmaps. And that's going to be... Uh, I believe we need to go up more. Yeah, here it is. UI, C HUD, bitmaps, ballistic meters. Let's open this up. And we're just going to click here, export all channels. And I'm going to export this out to my desktop so it's easy to access. And can close out a reclaimer, minimize gorilla. And here it is, ballistic meters.tiff. Going to open it with paint.net. And I'm going to show you what's going on with this image here. So I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to take a look at the Mahler ammunition, which is these five shells. I'm going to expand my color window. I want you to pay attention, especially to the blue channel here in RGB. So as I move the color picker from right to left, watch the watch this blue channel. As you can see, the blue value is going up. And this uh as I was saying earlier, this um this shader type meter actually uses the blue channel to keep track of how much ammunition is left in the magazine, and then it will subtract a, a bullet or round or what have you from the HUD based on, based on the uh, blue value. And that's exactly why when we were in Sapien, why we still had the full battle rifle um, meter, but only when we reload, reloaded, only 12 bullets were loaded. And I think this is it right here. It only loaded up to here. Uh, because it doesn't, you know, the, the shader doesn't just subtract. If, if, if the maximum... The shader doesn't know what the maximum amount of ammo a weapon can have. It only knows how much ammo has been spent in the mag. So what we need to do is that we actually need to create our own ammo meter, our own texture. Now one more thing I do want to point out is, uh, so we know what the blue channel does. The green channel I've noticed I'm, I'm guessing this has something to do with the fact that when the ammo meter is flashing when you're running low on ammo, that uh, the those rounds are kind of highlighted in red. I think that's what the green channel is used for. If you take a look, if you move your color picker over these different rounds, you'll notice that the green channel never goes above five. And the red channel is just not used at all. And of course, the alpha channel is kind of used to mask uh, the, the ammo meter like to the to the game. So 
so you don't have just like this block on the ammo meter like you can actually see through like in between the the rounds so we need to make our own ammo meter so i'm going to make so since my battle rifle only shoots uh one round and the magazine is only 12 rounds uh big i'm going to do a, a little something different i could easily just take this right here count up to 12 rounds of course i need to be a little bit more careful but i could easily just take this save it and whatever but i'm going to do things the cool way <laughs> so uh i'm going to be making my own custom completely custom ammo meter so i can just close out of paint.net for now and uh let's Let's open this bitmap tag back up, because we're going to need to reference it later. Well, we can minimize Gorilla. Now, right here, I have this image called BR Cart. And this, I took this from Halopedia. This is just an image of the exact round that a battle rifle in lore takes. So I'm going to be basing my ammo meter on this bullet. So I'm going to just close out of that, and I'm going to open up Blender. I would recommend you do this step in any program you want. I, like, do it in, um, probably the best program to do it in would be some sort of vector program like Inkscape, but I'm, I know Blender on the back of my hand, and, and I use Blender for just about everything, so I'm going to be using Blender for this step. I'm going to delete the cube and the light, not needed, and I'm going to go to my top view by pressing Z, and I'm also going to get rid of the timeline. Now I am going to add in that image of the battle rifle uh, cartridge, so I'm going to load it as a reference image, go to my desktop, and brcart.png. And that will give me the bullet. Now I'm going to center it a bit. I'm going to make it as centered as I possibly can. It won't be perfect, but it doesn't need to be perfect for now. And that's pretty good. I just used these offset X and Y dragged on them to, to center it a bit more. And I'm going to change the opacity down just so it's not kind of blinding. Now I'm going to select my camera and I'm going to clear rotation and transform or translate. So Alt R and Alt G. And what that will do is that we can get the camera looking down on the image. And I'm going to turn snap on. I'm going to drag it up a little bit. And for now, let's just hide the camera. Don't need it right now. I'm going to add in a mesh plane. Now, there's many, 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 many different ways you can approach doing this. I'm just going to do it kind of the easy way. I'm going to go to edit mode. And I'm going to sub or do a loop cut through the middle. And I'm going to delete these vertices right here. The reason I'm doing this is so I can just go to uh, add a mirror modifier. So everything I do on one side is reflected on the other. And I'm going to turn wireframe mode on as well so I can see the bullet on the other side. Now what I want to do is that I want to make a shape that matches up fairly well here. So I'm going to extrude down and then move this in. Extrude down. 
Now, uh, I'm getting kind of a little detailed here, and there's a very good chance that these finer details will not be picked up um, in the end product, because this is going to be kind of a smaller icon, but that's okay. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm just creating this shape here using this image as the reference. Kind of using Blender as a rudimentary vector imaging program. And now we get to the actual bullet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude this all the way up to the top. I should, I'm going to turn snapping off. And I'm going to make a whole bunch of loop cuts here. I'm gonna make like 12. And now I'm going to select the top here and I'm going to turn on proportional editing. I'm gonna turn on sharp. Oh, we want to, okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to set my 3D cursor to the middle top vertice right here and I'm going to uh, turn clipping on and I'm also going to put my transform pivot point to 3d cursor so now we should be getting something close to a to a bullet um, Maybe we want to change this to... No, root's not... I think sharp is what we want to use. And, um... It's not perfect, but... That's probably fine. So we have our bullet shape now. Uh, let's... I, I'm considering this pretty much finished now. What I'm going to do is, uh, to make things very simple, I'm going to go to Render Properties, and I'm going to change the Render Engine to Workbench. Basically what I want to do is I want to make a grayscale image. I want the bullet to be totally white, and I want, to be the, I want the background to be totally black. And we're going to use that to make our... Uh, RGB image because we're going to convert this black and white image into the different RGB channels. So I'm going to turn uh, I'm going to turn this sampling render all the way to 32 just to have like maximum anti-aliasing because why not? I'm going to turn lighting to flat just so we don't have any sort of shading. It's just giving us flat colors. And I'm going to turn color from material to object. You may be thinking we want to turn it to single, since we are we can just make the background black. But there's one more thing I want to do. So let's change this to object. And uh, one more thing we want to do here in the render properties is we want to change color management from filmic to standard. Standard is going to give us uh, actual whites. Filmic kind of dulls colors a bit, but we want um, the colors to be as true as possible, so just going to do standard. And uh, let's go to Output Properties. Let's, uh, we can, let's hide our um, image, our reference image, and let's go to Rendered Mode. And as you can see, we're getting a perfectly white uh, bullet here. Uh, under post-processing, let's change dither to zero because dither is just going to add extra noise that we don't need. We, we do not want to keep um, dither on. 
And I'm going to change color to black and white. Actually, no. Let's not. Let's change it to... No, let's just keep it to black and white for now. I'm going to turn compression all the way up to 100. You don't need to do this. It's just to make the file smaller. PNG does not have lossless compression, so you won't be losing any quality by bumping up compression. And I'm just going to set the color depth to 16. I don't think that's necessary, but just to make sure that our image isn't compressed at all. I mean, I know I just... <laughs> you know what? Let me change compression to zero. <laughs> um, yeah, honestly, the images that we're going to be making, you don't want... You, you really want to avoid any compression just in the case that there is some compression artifacting going on. PNG images do not have um, lossless compression, but just to be safe, let's just bump up color depth and compression all the way down. The reason why we want to have as little compression as possible is because we want to keep the data values of the RGB channels intact as possible because the game engine is going to use that data stored in those RGB channels. So next we want to go to scene properties. No, sorry, world properties. Let's change viewport display from this dark gray to just completely black. So now we have a black background. And I think the next step we can do is unhide our camera. Now let's position our camera a bit. Um, one thing that we want to keep in mind here is uh, what the resolution of our ammo meter is going to be. And if we take a look here at the ballistic meters, let's open this back up in paint.net. I'm going to just, I don't know, I'll probably, I believe this is the magnum. This might be a good reference to use. Um, so this is roughly 300 pixels by 60 pixels, this area. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to make each individual bullet here. I'm just going to make from top to bottom, I'm just going to make that 64 pixels. So let's go to the, let's change our resolution from 1080 to 64. Let's just make this a square image, so 64 by 64. Now we'll want to go to the object data properties panel where our camera um, options are. We want to change this from perspective to orthographic. That's going to give us a completely flat perspective, um, so there isn't going to be any depth, and we can change the orthographic scale. Um, I'm going to set my 3D cursor back to the world origin. And uh, I'm going to set the origin point of the bullet to be kind of exactly in the center here of the bullet. So I'm going to go back to edit mode. I'm going to select this very top vertex in the middle on the top and then the middle vertex on the bottom. And now I'm going to set my cursor to selected. That's going to give me that medium point. Now I want to put the origin point of the bullet here. So I'm going to go back to object mode, object, set origin to 3D cursor. So now I know that is the exact center of my bullet. So I'm going to go to uh, cursor to world origin and then selection to cursor, and that will center the bullet. That's looking good. I'm going to go to viewport shading. 
just so I can actually see the camera when it's not selected. Now I'm going to change the orthographic scale down to about three. Oops. The reason I set it to three is because I do want some breathing room on either side, uh, top and bottom. I think that'll look better. And, uh... Oh, yeah, one more thing. Uh, let's go to the Object Properties panel and let's select the bullet. Now, earlier I talked about in Workbench, we wanted to set the color to object, and it, the where the place it pulls the color for the object is in the object properties, and that's going to be under viewport display, and it's pulling this color. So if I go back to viewport shading, and if I change this to red, you can see that it is in fact this viewport display color that's being changed here. Um, reason I wanted to change it to object, the getting the color from object, is because I do want to put a little separator here between the bullet and the casing. So I'm going to <laughs> reposition the image because we just repositioned the bullet. And I'm going to put it roughly, doesn't need to be perfect, right there. And I'm going to go to wireframe mode, and I'm just going to put a plane, a very thin plane, like right here. So I'm going, in object mode, I'm going to add a new plane. And I'm going to move it, again, doesn't need to be perfect, I'm going to move it up to about there. And I'm going to scale it down on the Y axis. Okay, I want to change 3D cursor to median point and scale it down on Y. And I'm just going to scale it down to like 0 0.08. No, that's a little too much, maybe 0 0.05. And now I want to go to the object properties of this plane I just added in. And I want to change this color from white to black, and just to be safe, I'm going to move it up on the z-axis so it's not perfectly lined up on the z-axis with this bullet. I'm going to hide the reference image again. I'm also going to disable the image from the render. So now let's take a look at this. And yeah, that's looking pretty darn good. So next thing I want to do is render this out. So I'm going to go to render, render image, and there we have our bullet icon. So I'm going to go to image, save as, go to desktop, and I'm going to call this BRT round. And here we have the uh, export properties that we set up earlier. Save, and yeah, we can close out of this ballistic meters. And here is our battle rifle tack round. Okay, next step is doing a little bit of editing in paint.net. Okay, so I'm gonna open this with paint.net. Now what I'm wanting to do here is that I'm wanting to basically duplicate this by 12. So I'm going to create uh, a new image here that's just gonna give me all the space that I need. And uh, I'm going to go back to my BRT round, and I'm going to kind of crop it in a way. So I want to get kind of even sides 
um, but I want to add a bit more spacing. So what so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to start oh zoomed in a little too far. I'm going to basically line this up 12 times. However, I want a bit more spacing, so I'm just going to extend the bounds of this. So I'm going to do, I'm going to space it by like six, so on six pixels on each side. So I'm going to get down to the last pixel, space it out by one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to give it a little bit more room between each round. So I'm just going to go to a different area up here. And now I'm going to create a row of 12 of these guys. So, two, three. Maybe that's a little too much space. Maybe I want to do it by four. So, take away two pixels from both sides. Wait, did I go? Yeah, I went by one. So, one, two... So I'm going to do it by four instead. It's it's up to personal preference, really. I'm just doing what I think looks good. Yeah, that's looking pretty good, I think. Three. Four. So I'm, I'm again, making a row of twelve. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm just going to copy this whole bit here and paste. That'll give me my 12. And now I'm just going to crop this. Crop, and there we go. Now I'm going to save this as the actual meter. So going to save this as BRT meter A. I'll show you why we're saving that, why we're adding an A at the end. I'm going to save this as maximum color depth of 32-bit. And uh, now we want to actually make a grayscale mask for the blue channel. So if we go back here to our ballistic meters, um, let's open this in paint.net. We basically want to create blue boxes around each, each piece of each round, essentially. So, um, kind of the sort of annoying part about this is that even though we are changing values from black to sort of white, it's going to be so little that we're not going to be able to see that change really. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to set this layer, I'm going to set its opacity down quite a bit. Now, um, I'm going to select, I'm going to put a selection box around one bullet. And again, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it uh, with these dimensions here. So, one, two, three, oops, one, two, three, four. Okay, now I'm in my second layer. What I'm going to do is that I am going to set the RGB channels up by one. Now you want to start your first bullet with one. You don't want to start it with zero because zero means that the mag is entirely emptied. So you want to start with one. 
now with all of your channels set to one, um, you want to select the paint bucket tool. Let's set the tolerance all the way down. Let's set um, anti-aliasing off. And let's set blending mode to overwrite just to be safe. If we kept it on normal, there's chances that um, it won't give us that true one value. It'll give us some weird value because normal kind of blends it with a colors that already exist. So we want to change it to overwrite. Now let's fill this in. And this is the reason we set this layer to opaque, just so we can tell what we've already done. Um, and I should clarify, even though we only want this to be blue, the reason why we're setting this to re uh, setting all of this up is because we are going to pack these channels in Blender, and this is going to make a lot more sense later on. But now I'm going to select, I'm going to move this selection over to the second, uh, the second bullet. I'm going to move it over one, two, three, four. And now I'm going to change this RGB to two paint bucket. And you basically, uh, do this step over and over until all of your bullets are are um filled in. One, two, three, four. Okay, when you're finished with that, we will want to make sure that this is correct. So this bullet should be 1, and it should climb all the way up, and this bullet should be 12. So let's use the color picker, and let's make sure that... So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... 11 12 okay that's perfect so you want to make sure that you know you don't have any repeat numbers or skipped numbers because when you go back and you play the game um you're gonna when you shoot around you might have two bullets taken away instead of one uh now some of you will probably be thinking uh so if it's based entirely on the blue channel then you could kind of put this out of order. You don't have to do it from left to right. You could do it from right to left. You could, um, if you wanted to be really cursed, you could have like these just be random. So you could have this be one and this be 12 and this be five. And then they would just kind of be uh, subtracted randomly. And that kind of shows the the true power of how this system works. In fact, I made a, um, oh, did I not save it? Okay, here it is. I did find it. So the, the great power of this is that you can do any sort of shape you want. You can do any sort of, um, sequence you want. So right here, I made these and you can see that I made these circles, and they go down like this, and then when uh, when it gets to this last part, then the entire circle is removed. And that's because it entirely relies on the blue channel. So you can have... Um, you can do kind of whatever you want with this. It's... it's I'm I I feel like I'm not explaining it well enough.
here we go. So here's the original uh, files I had for that circular ammo meter. Um, let's take a look at uh, this right here. I'm going to open this in paint.net. And uh, I'm going to open... So this right here is just what I use for the green channel and the alpha channel, but this beater, this, <laughs> this meter B is what I use for, uh, the blue channel. So I'll open this in paint.net and I'm going to increase the contrast so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, come on. Really? Hold on. All right, I'm just going to show you. Um, it's super dark, so you can't really see what's going on, but um, right here you can see I start at... Now, you're, you don't want to start at zero. This is actually a mistake on my end, but um, you can see if when I move down, you can see blue is being added by one, and then I go kind of left, two, I go up, three. So you can see, you can do a circular sequence. So it doesn't have to be this way, it doesn't have to be left to right, it doesn't have to be right to left, it can be horizontal, it can be whatever pattern you want it to be. And the way I kind of just show you a little bit better, um, if I go to, if I open this, this is actually the mask image that I used for blue, so what I did is that I just use the paint bucket tool to fill in the right blue channel value I wanted. So this is kind of the sequence it goes. So it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's how that works. So you can, hopefully, I explained well enough that you can do some really cool stuff with this. But for this tutorial, I just kind of kept it simple. So now, uh, so we saved our, um, we saved our, uh, meter A image. Now we want to save that blue, uh, grayscale mask that we just created, uh, as another file. So I'm just gonna, um, delete this background layer. And I'm going to set this to full opacity. And let's just double check to make sure that the these values are where we want them to be. Okay, that's looking good. Alright, so I'm going to save this as BTR or BRT meter B. And save that. Save it as 32-bit. And now we have we have these two files, and these two files are all we need to kind of compile it into this format. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go back to Blender. I'm going to save this file um, on my desktop, so we can go back to it later if we need to. It's always good to save your files. Um, any project files, even if you don't think you'll need to go back to it later, because you might. So, BRT round. And now I'm going to op open a new, or make a new Blender file, just general. And now I'm going to go to the compositing tab. This is where we're going to combine that BRT meter A and BRT meter B image. So when you're in the compositing tab, you want to click use nodes and we can get rid of this render layers node so select it and hit x um we you don't really need this node that i'm going to show you but it's it's good to have to preview so add output viewer just put that under composite and you'll notice that the background has turned black uh Let's get rid of this dope sheet in this timeline window so it's out of our way. We're not doing any sort of animation stuff. 
Now, uh, next thing we do want to do is we want to um, import these meter A and meter B images. So I'm going to kind of make it so I can see my desktop at the same time. Let's drag this into the compositor and that into the compos compositor. Now we have both of our images. And uh, now under output properties panel, we want to change the resolution again. We want to change the resolution to match the resolution of both of these images that we just imported. So I'm going to actually drag up to create a new window, and I'm going to go to image editor, and I'm going to open up either one of these. And if I take a look here on this side panel under image, this will tell me the dimensions. So it's 288 by 64, so I'll just... Put those numbers here. Okay. So how do we combine these two images? Well, what we want to do is let's plug this into image on the viewer. And now we can see that our image Now the main, the number one main node that we actually want here is uh, we want to add a converter combine RGBA, and let's put that but in between that line we just created. Now you can see what's happening here. The white areas just turned red, and that's because um, it's taking the value of that white, which. Um, when RGB is combined, it creates full white. Uh, so it's taking that white value and it's converting it into a red value. But if you remember back on our, it, when we looked at the ballistic meters image, there's nothing in the red channel. Red channel's just zero. So we want to keep this R at zero. However, what we do want to do is that we want to take our grayscale BTR meter B that we made specifically for the blue channel, and we want to plug this in into the B channel on the combined RGBA. Next, what we want to do is we want to uh, make, or we want to put in a color ramp node. This color ramp node is going to allow us to clamp that green value to only go up to five, as I showed earlier. So we want to put the image into factor. And let's take a look at uh, what that looks like. So again, it gives us full green, which isn't what we want. We want this to be a very dark green. We want it to only go up to five. So I'm going to change uh, this white. And I'm going to actually do this in hex because I actually know what the hex number is for this. So uh, the for white or for gray or black, whatever you want to call it, just grayscale, um, the value 5 is going to be 050505. Zero, five, zero, five, zero, five. And that you are probably freaking out because you can't see anything. Well, that's because... Again, that value of 5 is, is very dark. It's pretty much indistinguishable to the human eye, but that's going to be very important for the shader because the shader can see that. Um, now, you're also probably thinking, well, maybe we should uh, plug this BTR meter A into the A here, and that'll give us our transparency. We could do that, but that's going to give us a massive issue. And I'll show you what that issue is. Under post-processing, again, I'm going to turn dither down to zero. And um, in the render properties, under color management, I do want to set this to standard again. Make sure that's set to standard. Now, let's set up our output here. So 
let's output this as a PNG again. And let's make sure RGBA is selected so alpha is output correctly. Turn the compression down, color depth all the way up to 16. <clears throat> now let's render it. Um, oh yeah, we should probably, instead of, oh, you know what? The reason it didn't render is because uh, we forgot to put in composite. So composite's going to be your render. Viewer is just the preview out here. So when we render it for real this time, you can see we actually, we get what we're, we're expecting. So let's save this and let's save this as BRT ammo meter. Okay, let's save it. And I want to point out that um, if you right click and you move your mouse around, that's basically the same as doing the color picker. And you can see that even when uh, we are sampling a color that's in the alpha channel, you can see that on the bottom, the blue channel is still changing even when we're on that alpha. But when we save the image, that's not the case, and I don't know why Blender does this, but it's super annoying. Where if we open that Blender, uh, where we we just saved it in Blender, let's take a look at what it did. So, if we select a color around this, we should expect the blue channel to be 12. And it is around the alpha, but for whatever reason, when we sample a color that's not 100% either completely opaque or completely transparent, it completely destroys the color, the blue value here for whatever reason. I don't know why it does this. So if an area isn't fully opaque or fully transparent, you can expect your RGB values here to just be totally screwed up. I don't know why it does this, but if we sample this right here, this pixel, you can see blue channel for whatever reason is 33. And if we select this, blue channel for whatever reason is 29. We don't want it to do that. We want it to be 12 because the shader is going to be using that number in the blue channel. So, and you can see this is an issue for every single pixel that isn't fully opaque or fully transparent. And in some cases, what you'll come across is that when you're sampling an area that's fully transparent, then the blue channel is just going to be zero for, for some reason right now. Earlier, this wasn't doing it for me, but... When I was sampling a pixel that was in an area that was fully transparent, blue was just zero. Which, again, is not what you want. You want these blocks to be blue. Like, these full blocks around the, the, the uh, bullet to be blue. You don't, you don't want just this area to be blue. You want, you know, you want these things, you want it to be consistent. So what is the workaround to this, this issue, this very annoying issue that Blender, for whatever reason, can't preserve this stuff correctly? Uh, let's close this out. Of, let's close BRT ammo meter out of paint.net. Actually, we can close all of these images out that we have open, but let's keep paint.net open because we're going to apply this fix in paint.net. So uh, what we want to do um, is, since alpha clearly is not working the way we want it to work, we're just going to omit alpha completely from the combine RGBA node. And let's render it out again, and we're going to get this pretty much completely black image. But again, it's going to have those green and blue values that we need in it. 
let's save as and let's save over our BRT ammo meter image. Save as. Now when we let's open this in paint.net. And since we don't have an alpha channel, our color channels should be preserved. So let's take a look. And as you can see, 12 stays as 12. It doesn't jump up to 32 or 29 or whatever it did. It stays as 12 like it's supposed to. And when we move left, it, mo it goes to 11, 10. Perfect. So now what we want to do in paint.net, this is where we're going to apply our fix. So this BRT meter A, where we have the full black and full white, I'm going to open this in paint.net as well. Now there is an add-on for paint.net, I believe this should tell me. Um, there, there's a, there's an add-on for paint.net called like bolts pack, basic pack or whatever. I'll put a link in the description for it, just like I do everything else. And that's going to give you a bunch of these tools that you can use, adjustments and effects. Um, and it's going to give us something that is very important for this, and it's going to be under object, paste alpha. We're going to be using this effect here to apply our alpha channel to the image. So uh, since it's paste alpha, we want to select everything in our black and white image. We want to select this, and we want to copy it. Now we go back over to our BRT ammo meter image and let's go to effects and let's go to object paste alpha. Now here bolts, bolt baits, paste alpha window right here. We want to keep replace current alpha with, um, we want to keep that as is, and you want to make sure that shades of gray on clipboard is not alpha channel on clipboard because we're we're pasting it with that black and white image, so it's going to expect a grayscale image. Make sure that's selected and we can hit OK. Now, finally, we have our alpha channel packed correctly. So when I move my uh, color picker across, you can see that, oh, the blue channel's actually 12. It's not 31. <laughs> this over here is not uh, 29 on the blue channel. It's, it's 12 like it's supposed to be. So we have all of our channels packed like they're supposed to be packed. Now we can save this. Let's save as. Now, we don't want to save it as a PNG this time. We want to save it as a TIFF. The reason why is because uh, the Halo uh, 3 game engine, Blam, or uh, the tag system, when you import uh, a bitmap, it recognizes TIFF files. It doesn't recognize PNG files, so we want to save this as a TIFF. And let's name it... Um, I'm going to name it closer to what other things are named in the engine in the tag folder, so I'm going to name this BRT underscore meter. I'm going to save. I'm going to keep a uh, bit depth to 32. Save that, and now we have our appropriate meter, ammo meter, for our tactical battle rifle. So the next step is, of course, to import this into Halo three mod tools. So I'm going to open up that folder. Um, we can close out a blender. Don't need blender open anymore. And uh, we want to put this in. Um, we want to create a data directory that uh, resembles our tags directory. So in my graphics folder, I'm going to uh, create a new UI CHUD bitmaps folder. So if I go back to tags graphics, I'm going to create 
UI. C HUD bitmaps. And let me make sure that that's correct. It should be. So UI C HUD bitmaps. Perfect. So here's the, that ballistic meters dot bitmap. So we want to create a BRT meter uh, bitmap in our giraffics ui c hud bitmaps folder oops um and i i created that in my tag so i'm just gonna copy this ui folder and go back to my data folder i'm going to create i'm gonna <laughs> that shouldn't be there um that was from testing for this tutorial Okay, add a folder, graphics, and put my UI C HUD bitmaps folder in there. And now I'm going to copy this BRT meter.tiff file. I'm going to copy that and put it into that data bitmaps folder that I just created. So now I'm going to open up tool so we can import this as a bitmap. So CMD, that'll bring up the command prompt tool. And let's take a look at what com tool command we need to use. So I know I know what it is, but here's a cool tool tip. <laughs> uh, if you type a letter, that will give you every single tool command that starts with that letter. Oh, I was thinking of the next tutorial I'm going to do. It's not going to start with S. It's going to start with B. So we want to use um, tool bitmap single. So let's take a look at how we use that command. So we can type in tool bitmap. And that bitmap single is going to be spelled with an underscore, not a hyphen like most other commands. And that has tripped me up quite a bit. So you want to make sure that bitmap single is spelled with a underscore. Okay, so here's what the command looks like. It wants an image file path. So let's find our image. And uh, let's do tool bitmap single. Let's put in that path, so that's going to be graphics uh, UI C HUD bitmaps, and then BRT underscore meter dot tiff. Okay, one bitmap imported as diffuse map. Okay, great. We can close out of tool. Let's go back and let's uh, let's go back to Gorilla. Now, one thing we do need to do is that we need to set up a new C HUD um, tag for our tactical battle rifle. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, close out of Gorilla for now, and I'm going to go to tags. I'm going to just copy the battle rifle C HUD tag and paste it into mine, uh, my stuff. So, um, that's going to be under tags, UI, C HUD. So battle rifle C HUD definition. I'm just going to copy this and put it into my C HUD tags folder. And you can see our BRT meter dot bitmap is there in our bitmaps folder, which is great. That's exactly what we want. So now I'm going to open up um, Gorilla again. Uh, 
Um, so let's, uh, we didn't need to close it earlier, but whatever. I'm sorry, I'm shooting, I'm kind of shooting from the hip with this tutorial, but, um, sorry, it's not as straightforward as the other ones. Um, I'm going to change that file we just copied over, that CHUD, to battle rifle hack.chud definition. There we go. Um, you want to make sure that the one you renamed is in your, your Jurat or whatever your mod folder tags name is, and then, you know, the folders you set up. You want to make sure you're not um, overriding the actual battle rifle, but if you are, then you would have seen the other um, CHUD definitions for all the other weapons, so... Um, I'm going to, uh, refresh this panel in Gorilla, so now we should see Battle Rifle Tack dot CHUD definition, so with the Battle Rifle Tack dot weapon tag open, let's change the CHUD interface here to Battle Rifle Tack, so let's go to my mod folder UI CHUD battle rifle tack dot CHUD definition. Now let's uh, mess around with this CHUD definition. So of course we want to change the ammo area part. And let's go down to um, meter. There it is, bitmap widgets meter. Let's keep going down until we see um, under here we see the render data meter. Let's go all the way down. Bitmap. Here we go. Now uh, let's change this to our BRT meter bitmap. Cool. I don't, uh, I think you can just change this sequence index to zero because technically our image, our bitmap here doesn't have any sequences. So um, let's save that. We need to save, save both of, save both our weapon and our battle rifle tack. And let's open up Sapien so we can see what's going on here. So, Sapien, I'm going to load up Isolation, because it's a small map. So, Isolation has finished loading in Sapien, so I'm going to add the uh, Battle Rifle Tack into the map here. So I'll just add it somewhere where it's easy to find. Right here we'll do, so... Objects, items, weapons. Let's edit types and add the battle rifle tack. So we'll need to find the graphics folder since it's no longer in the weapons rifle folder. So let's go to graphics, objects, weapons, rifle, battle rifle tack, battle rifle weapon, um, add tags done. Now let's uh, add in the weapon. I'm going to extend the game window up so it's easier to see. All right, let's find that tactical battle rifle and let's pick it up and see if our ammo meter works. As you can see, the uh, ammo meter with our custom uh, bullet icons is there, but when we start shooting, nothing happens. And uh, yeah, why is that? Well, and you can see when we ran out of ammo, it went to it, it showed us four. If you remember what Tool said when we imported that as a bitmap tag, it said that it imported as a diffuse map. Well, we don't want it to be a diffuse map. We want it to be a C HUD interface map. 
and that's why it's not uh, counting down correctly. So let's fix that. We're going to fix that in Gorilla. So um, right here in our C HUD definition tag, we can just open the BRT meter dot bitmap. And right here, let's show bitmap. Let's see what's going on. All right, there it is. Okay, so uh, we want to change the usage from diffuse map because it imported as a diffuse map. So let's uh, change this to C HUD related bitmap. And uh, as a reference, let's bring up, let's load the battle rifle C HUD. Um, actually, no, let's open up the ballistic meters bitmap to see how that bitmap is set up so we can kind of copy values from here over to here. Okay, so um, the ballistics meter dot bitmap is set as a C HUD related bitmap. Okay, that's good. Sprite spacing for bump map height. I don't think these are really used. Um, the uh, I don't think we need to change the max bitmap level, but we do want to change is the force bitmap format. We want to see how the ballistic meters dot bitmap is best uncompressed color format. We want to save. We want to change this to best uncompressed color format as well. And let's save it. Let's save our brt meter dot bitmap. We can close out of this ballistic meters dot bitmap. Okay, now let's see if it works. You can see reloaded that bitmap. Let's see if it works. Still doesn't work. The reason why it doesn't work is because um, when you save a bitmap uh, tag, these changes aren't actually represented. You actually need to press this re-import bitmap button for those changes to actually take effect. So let's re-import it. And you can see one bitmaps imported as C HUD related bitmap. Great. All right, let's see if it works now. It works. Perfect. Exactly what we want. Now, uh, one last thing for this tutorial is that you can see that we, we only go down to four rounds and it's already the HUD is already warning us to reload, but we still have plenty of rounds in our in our mag, so let's change that. And we can do that. Uh, we can close out of the BRT meter bit, bitmap. We're done with that. Let's change... Um, I think we changed that here in this... Yeah, so way down in the bottom in the battle rifle tack, see how definition, low ammo loaded threshold... Let's change this from eight to three. So when we reach three rounds in the mag, that's when it's gonna start blinking red. So let's save. Let's go back to Sapien. And you can see it's no longer blinking red anymore, but when we go down to three rounds, that's when it starts blinking red. So that's perfect. Okay, so we have a custom weapon meter, custom ammo meter, so that's how that process is done. Again, you can really go wild with this. Like, very wild. <laughs> so yeah, fully custom, fully custom uh, ammo meter. Now the next tutorial will be on... Um, the HUD messages and also the icon of the battle rifle on the top right. So you can see here it says hold E to swap for and then it has the rocket launcher icon. Well, when we look at the battle rifle, it says hold E to swap for and it just has the typical battle rifle icon. Well, we want to change that so it has that red dot sight. Um, now let's uh, let's pick it up and you can see it just has picked up a battle rifle about we also want it to say picked up a tactical battle rifle. 
So the next tutorial will show how to change those messages to have our icon, and also we'll show you how to change the icon on the top right, uh, right above the ammo meter. So yeah, hope you had fun, hope you had success with this tutorial, and I will see you in the next one. Peace!